So Mike has a tiny penis. Penis, 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 vagina, vagina, vagina. This is name pending. I'm Keeper. I'm Mike Culberson. <laughs> so, okay. So I got one to start. I was okay. thinking about this earlier. So I had a coworker ask me today, and this is going to be one that we can both weigh in on pretty heavy. But he was asking me today. Um, he said, "Do you think that there are spirits in in houses?" And how this came up is he said that. When he had purchased his house, you know, his wife and him were the way he, he's he's in his fifties, so he's like physically affectionate, yeah. like the most awkward. Way. What I'm saying is they were bang, right? Um, smash, smash, cookie pass. Yeah, and it was on the regs, but he said that someone died in the house before he, him and his wife bought it. Like and, died and it was disclosed, or died because they're old, disease, something like that, right? Um, but he was telling me that they moved into it and suddenly that regular affection went away. And so he's like, he didn't think anything about it. He's like menopause, whatever. Now they've moved out of the house yeah, and literally, oh yeah, that's the thing is like, they were in that house for like years, but now they've moved into this apartment and they're in preparation of their big move and it's like he's like four or five times a day and he's like i'm exhausted i am too old for this shit. what happened no i do think i really do think that spirits can attach themselves to buildings and houses and yes. they can possess people yes like that's in every culture in every religion there is a type of possession of a sort christianity has it uh in Arabic, oh my gosh, Muslims. Wow. Amazing. Muslims, the Sikhs, yeah, the, like, the Filipinos, the Native it's Americans. It's in every culture. Everyone has some kind of spirit or demon, yep. malevolent spirit, you know. And I, I definitely do agree that it attaches itself to items that are, I don't know, just items. Mm. It does depend. And if the person wasn't a believer of what they believed, that they didn't fully pass on, I think the person is either stuck there and being tormented and the demons kind of possession over their spirit because I mean maybe this is their hell now are you you're one of the ones who believes that all malevolent spirits are demons yes okay I'm not right I think that there's a difference I do think that there are demons but I also think that there are just malevolent spirits in their own right so there's principalities, from what I believe and what I understand, there's principalities which have ownership over certain areas. Yeah. That's why you see certain areas affected by certain things. What drug issues are in this area of wherever? It's, oh, this drug's really big. This drug's really big. There's more incest, or there's more this, or there, like, you see certain type of continuous issues around certain areas. And that comes from my understanding of principalities and demons that rule that type of area so I mean I do believe that it probably is a, is a demon or was a demon or maybe she was dealing with stuff to the point that she didn't like something or she opened a doorway to something and then when she moved she no longer had the doorway because it wasn't available to her anymore and see I, I definitely believe that I, I do think that demons are real I think that they're bigger and harder hitting and that they're not just everywhere but I do think that malevolent spirits you know ghosts whatever you want to call them and that, exist and, and I'm not discounting so there's levels of demonology ghosts are a part of demonology they're lower level demons it's all encompassed into one thing from 
uh, all the research I've done and the studies I've done on it, yeah. it's a lower level. So not that it's, I don't believe in ghosts. I do believe in ghosts, but I think they're demons. Okay. They're just lower level demons. And see, that's why I wanted to touch on because I knew that we would flesh it out. And well, we would have different. We would have different opinions on it. Not that we're going to end our friendship here. You know what? Time that's to it. fight. I'm Time done. to fight. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pearl. Pearl's ready to fight. Yeah, Pearl. But you know, he he was asking me about it because you know it had come up in conversation before, and he was first asking me if you know there was a ritual or something where you blessed your house, right? And you just pray over your house. Right. And I was like, yes, that is a thing. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, and I think both houses that my parents had purchased when I lived with them, right, the ones mm -hmm. that they actually owned, there was something living there. Um, and both times my mom went through herself, Pearl, don't go over that way. You're going to knock over all those cameras. <laughs> Pearl! Pearl! Um... <laughs> But, uh, but there was something there. There was the something there. And so, you know, one time, it, and there's two different stories I'm going to go into before we move on. But the first house, which was, they had purchased in the 90s, I was a little kid. Uh, I started out living in one bedroom, and that was my bedroom. And the spirit would come down the hall and go towards my bedroom. But when I moved bedrooms, it started going to the other bedroom that I was in. See, and there's a multitude of things it could be. Pearl. It could be unforgiveness on your part, coming from your backstory of everything you dealt with, moving yeah. into a new place. Unforgiveness for being given away. Unforgiveness, it's an unknown area. Maybe they didn't understand at the time that they had full dominion over their house. It could have been that too. I mean, it's kind of hard to know unless you're fully there. And you can be walking a fully good religious or practical life and still be attacked by demons but my mom blessed that house correct nothing happened after but that. who has it christianity who has dominion over it the wife who's the head of the household the dad so if the dad is dealing with something then she yes she can she can bind them to the house bind them in areas where they don't do anything but if it's an issue he's dealing with or an issue you're dealing with i can bind the stuff that you bring into the house and it doesn't go anywhere but i can't fix your deep heart issues mm. assuming that it was uh, assuming it was driven by issues mm -hmm. now there is a woman who had died in that house and i think that there was supposed to be a, a ghost there was supposed to be one one spirit that was malevolent and that was the one that was like following into the rooms yeah <coughs> and then there was another spirit that my mom thinks was of the woman who had died in that house and she thought that she was what's the opposite of malevolent i don't know um extremely good beneficial yeah yes yeah, along those lines and she thinks that that had a protecting presence um maybe it's just the holy spirit i mean she's christian maybe it was i don't think there's good spirits other than the holy spirit i mean that's well that's my belief and all the research i've done alone I can't find a single thing that discounts demons, which is fine, but that also is like, oh, well, there's good spirits, at least in Christianity. There, mm. there isn't. The good spirit is the Holy Spirit. There's no multiple. And not to say there's not other gods, because even in the Bible it says there are there many are other, other gods, gods. Yeah. but there's none before me. Yeah. And that, that's what I believe. So not even no. God discounts the other stuff. So maybe... Those are demons in account to Christianity and understanding that maybe there are spirits. But I don't I don't know it all. I don't know everything tied to it. I would like to know it would be cool, it would be understanding. Well, the other side of this is that I've never seen anything. And even when I was a teenager, the second house we lived in, there was something dark that would like walk up and down the stairs. My cousin saw it. And apparently, he refused to go upstairs by himself. I didn't see shit. I lived upstairs. Like, like, like that's where I was at. Yeah. But my mom did bring up something fascinating, and we attributed it to, you know, Alzheimer's, right? Because, you know, my grandma got Alzheimer's, but she lived in that house. But it wasn't until we moved into that house that she started to really go, woo, go real hard, real hard. 
Or so, was it taken away from her? Like, was she still doing stuff? Like, was she still active? Or She wasn't super active. Because I know that's, medically at least, the moment you break away from doing stuff, you start declining. Yeah. That's why you hear people retire and then get another job. Yeah. Like, for guys, it's like, or they pick up a hobby and they're like, and I'm they're a, hard a, into that hobby. I'm a woodworker. It's like, you haven't touched wood ever. I'm a woodworker now. Or I'm going to start making a metalworking, a metal fabbing. And you just go so far into it. You're just like, this is my life. Your midlife yeah. crisis, a lot for military guys that get out, do their 20 years, join 18, 19. Now they're like, I'm not even 50. Let me do another career or another giant hobby. Maybe, maybe she just... I mean, gave she, up in a way, in the sense that she didn't have what she was used to doing, or didn't feel the drive. I do you know that my and again, we're not basing this off of what I've seen because I haven't seen it, and I've talked to multiple people in my family who have seen strange things. And well, I've seen, seen strange stuff things. I mean, I've never seen anything. I don't see shit. We were overseas um, with the military at the time, and. There, we were doing a protection detail in Africa for some missionary group because warlords, everything, all this stuff's going yeah. crazy. So there's this, she maybe weighed 115 pounds soaking wet. Older lady. She was 80s, 90s. They said she lived till she was like 112. I don't know. I, I don't know if their years are the same. I don't know how they do their math. But older lady looks super frail. She fought off five fully fucking kitted guys. Really? It was like, okay, well, to me, that's demon possession. Like, I'm sorry. I think I could beat up an old 80-year-old lady that's maybe 100 pounds soaking wet. Like, in that frail, in that condition. But say you fought five guys all weighing about 200 pounds all at the same time, and you won and walked away, and they're just like, fuck it, I'm done. There's something there. But, I mean, there's there's stories all around the world about crazy stuff like this, and it's videotaped. Yeah, there's a lot of there's military stories mm-hmm. where people Cabo, stop! My dog's humping my other dog. Kick me. <laughs> uh, but there's military stories, yep. and you can find them online. It, you know, even if we say one percent, just one percent of the stories online are true. That's still a large number of very strange occurrences. Well, you had the ghost walker overseas in the middle of the desert. It was just like, you'd see this person just walk. And he'd either be walking just on the horizon or he'd walk through the gate and then disappear. Yeah. It's like, all right. And every once in a while, it'd be, it'd be noted in the logbook. And there are other times it wouldn't. And you're like, okay, they saw something and then it just evaporated. It just disappeared. Well, a lot of the times, if it is reported, Mm -hmm. officers will slap it down and they'll say, that doesn't go up. Or, dudes will see weird shit, and they might see weird shit for fucking months, but they're not going to say nothing because that's their career. Exactly. You're like, we saw nothing. Like, if if you and your buddy are out there and you're, you're just doing watch, whatever watch you're doing, you're there and you're just like, what the fuck is that? And then you're like, I don't know. And you're looking and you're looking. And then you just get to the point where it's just like, it disappears. You're like, I'm not recording it. Well, and that's that's the other side of it, too, is because, you know, if if you if you do see it, now you're now you're not talking to about well, it correct. to anyone with you because, you know, the only you're overseas. So the only time you really talk about this shit is when you're a little bit smammered. Yeah. But you're not getting smammered overseas. And you're also not talking to it to folks because you never know when someone's going to be like he's talking some crazy yeah. shit and congratulations we're, you get section seeing, 8 we're seeing this with pilots now pilots that have served 20 plus years ago 10 plus years ago with the whole aliens are real and, yeah but they talk about seeing things all the time and this has been reported since one of the first flights we've had military ones right like all the way back to World War 1 like there's like we saw stuff on there mm-hmm. it's like Okay, so we have these type of interactions. Now, people attribute that to, you know, there's the fatigue, imagination, there's... fatigue, you know, floaters in the eye. And I, I could agree with that up to about 1%. Same thing Again. with the internet. There, there has to be some... The best lie has the most truth in it. There are so many stories out there that even if 
just 1% of those stories is true, then that's still fucking crazy. Yeah, because you're talking about a fish story. It's like, oh, I caught this this 30-pound, 42-inch red trout. You're like, okay, and then you hear later on down the road, it's like, oh, 60 pounds, and it's a fishtail. I do think a lot of them are fishtails. Mm-hmm. It's like, it starts off true. You tell one person, then the details get lost in transit. Blurry, blurry, and... And maybe they did see stuff up there. I don't know. I mean, most of my flying stuff is jumping out of planes. Well, and I get... <laughs> I am so tired of the History Channel now with their ancient aliens and their ghost hunters. I'll and throw their... it on so I can go to sleep. Now, do you know the, the Ghost Hunter show? Yeah. Have you ever seen the first season? Yeah, my wife loves Ghost Hunters. We have like every the very single first season. season? We have Ghost like, Hunter clothes in our house. The first season was like some real shit going on. Well, they just did one. He... He released one last year, the year before. It just came on Amazon Prime. And it's the worst stories, the worst hauntings, the worst of this. And I was like, okay, maybe you'll do more history because it's just you talking, older, the bald guy. And I'm watching it, and it's like five, ten minutes into it. But it all it fucking is is, oh, this is the story. But there's no findings. It was like, bro, give me... I need fucking meat. It was like, you give me this appetizer, you build all this up, and you're like, and you when just waste some time. When there's like shadow creatures, like very clear shadow creatures moving around, or when people are showing up with like scratches where they've been on camera the whole time and they didn't like flash pan and they pull up the shirt and there's fucking scratches and, and you're just like, that's fucking, that well, seems real. I want to talk about the Grand Canyon in this, and then we'll go back to your grandma. Grand Canyon? Your grandma talking about dementia, yeah. the two stories you had. But um, the Grand Canyon, I think it was 1930s, 1940s. It was before the war and a little bit after World War One and Two. that they found, like, Mayan gold. They found, they found gold from all different cultures. They found a religious belief system in there like fully in the Grand Canyon, but somehow it's sealed off. Like we have full on videos. The Smithsonian is, is going under a lot of scrutiny within the past couple of years for covering stuff up. Well, sh- no shit. Like everyone's covering up something. Yeah. But they have these giant places where you would put a full on crane, like full on boom crane. And it, they built concrete pads there so they could bring stuff out. And there's videos of this and there's people recorded doing it. So this dude that originally found it made a lot lot of money. Two years later, he disappeared. Six years after that, he was found. He doesn't know who the fuck he is. Doesn't know anything. Really? Same guy, tracked. He He was the same person, through and through. At least from the way we could find it, the way we understand you are you. If you have a twin somewhere, then I guess technically you could. But... He denies any involvement. There's handwritten letters. There's track records of it. There's everything they took out of there. But this place, it no longer exists in the Grand Canyon. So he was covered up. It was barred off. And I understand a lot of the government's barring it off was for protection for the bat population and for um, splunking issues. Because people would get caught down there for days, years. Mm-hmm. And we everybody saw 127 hours do choose off his arm, essentially. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Uh, I can see the safety risk in it. But if you're going to be stupid, then you're going to be stupid. I believe, I am a firm believer in the Darwin Award, especially for adults. I am not about saving you from yourself. Yep. But to go, to dive real quick, give you cliff notes. Found all this gold, found all this stuff that wasn't from America. At all. It had nothing to do with natives, had nothing to do with anything. And it dated back to... Atlantis time frame with Mayans and the Indonesia people. Pearl, stop whining, girl. So across the board, none of it tracked why I was here. Especially considering that they were saying, oh, the water levels were higher. Which means they would be underground for where this tunnel supposedly was. Mm-hmm. But there was government Smithsonian workers that walked in there. 
felt a heavy presence. We're talking about miles of caves. Miles of caves. There was a full and fucking city down there. But they left and had issues. Really? Like, most of them died five, ten years later. Stuff you hear about in ancient Egypt. It's like, oh, well, they have... They had some plague or some infection or something. No, they just... Five of them died the first... Like, was it... After the fifth year, they all died the same day. That's sketch. It was like, okay, well, there's something there, then. There's yeah. something there. Same thing with the 1% of stories. It's like, there's something there. But a lot of History Channel does get to the point. That's why and see, just, it makes us... It, it makes anyone anyone who believes in any kind of supernatural or, or believes in religion or anything, it all makes us look like fucking idiots. Yeah. Every time they have another ancient aliens and... A, and you know what? I'm so disappointed in the History Channel because back when I was a kid, History Channel had it was, history. It was history. That's and, why I just go to YouTube and yeah, I watch people I'll, that I'll, throw out. There are podcasters out there, yep. you know? And I mean, there's even podcasters out there who would listen to us right now and call us fucking morons for having this conversation. But I still watch them because I, I enjoy their content. Yeah, I mean, I don't care. We're here for good conversation and dialogue. <laughs> don't fucking care it's a release for us but my mom going back to that second house my mom one time I was gone and my dad was gone and my grandma was ritual, gone yeah. and she went through with you know blessed water and blessed the whole house blessed it to the nth degree whatever was in that house was gone so there, there is truth in holy water there's also truth in seeds depending on how you use it like, there, there's a big difference in cleansing house. Pearl! Come here, girl. Ultimately, as a Christian, all you gotta do is pray over the house and find the spirits and kick them out. Pearl, like that's, come here. That's it. If you're a Christian, you're like, oh, well, no, there's more I gotta do. But then you don't believe in God. <laughs> you're, you're talking about an all-powerful God that you believe in, but he can't cleanse your house when you ask him to? Like, that, it doesn't track. It was like, okay, well, fine. If, if, if this you is... feel more comfortable using holy water to do it, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm talking people that are like, oh, well, I don't know if he can do this. So, then we don't believe in St. God. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, I'm not discounting your mom because I, I have friends that clean with sage because there's biblical tracking on it and people that do it with holy water. So, I, I, I bless my house with holy water. I, and that's what I do. I have holy water and it's pretty much oil at this point. It's oil. Yeah. And you just pray over the house and you cleanse it, you put it over the doorways, and, and that's... I do that at least two, three times a year for my house, but I also bind the spirits. It's like when everybody comes over, I'll pray before everyone comes over. And then when they leave, I'll pray that any crap they brought in leaves with them. <laughs> it's like, I love my friends, but I deal with my own demons that I don't need other people's stuff messing with me. But the ritual she did that the second story you're talking about you said you had two stories one was that was the second story. okay your mom cleansing the house again yeah the second the second house we moved into she, she, she cleansed that one and whatever was there was gone now i know that you're saying that the man in the house and this side or another and that this is a divergence in our beliefs again because i believe the woman oh, no, is she just is, as powerful i'm not, not discounting more that. powerful in the household than the man she is. is because she is supposed to manage the house she is supposed to manage the household he is the head so he is responsible ultimately for everything that happens inside the house and with his household i'm not saying he had to cleanse it like your mom cleansing it was perfectly fine i'm not dis I'm not saying anything with that was wrong. I'm just saying. Listen, you just said my mom was wrong. That Time damn to fight. straight. I'll tell her November. <laughs> tell her November. I said you were wrong. <laughs> Mike said I'd tell you this. No, but I'm a strong believer. If, if my wife falters somewhere in the house in her personal life, then I didn't help build her up to where she was able to accomplish this. Why? Because I'm the man in the house. She's my wife. I should give her everything she needs to succeed and that's just that's my belief yeah because i'm i'm not one that's like oh women can't preach i've met some great freaking women pastors that are that far outweigh men that are 
I was, was it, 18 yes, I was, to 27. I was about to say that. I've met some male pastors who cannot yep. preach. Now, maybe they got the spirit in them, but they can't verbalize it worth a damn. Yeah, exactly. It's not the office they're supposed to be in. Simply put, they're not supposed to be there. Uh, they're supposed to be walking with Christ and supposed to be helping people, but maybe they're not supposed to be in the pulpit. Yeah. Maybe they're supposed to be an elder. Maybe they're supposed to be a deacon or something else in the church instead of the face that talks to everyone because it's like, oh yeah, this story is so great. Right. Are then, you are you engaging people? Are you making them feel that they have a connection? Now, I got a funny story for you okay. about my parents. My mom was telling me that, um, you know, they've been getting involved in their community out, out there in, in, uh, in near Houston, right? In small yeah. town near Houston. And um, they got in, invited to a uh, predominantly black church. When oh I say predominantly black church, I, I mean, black they were the only white people there. And my mom said that she was ever so briefly uncomfortable. And then, and they then it just went away. Yeah. Like immediately went away because I love black churches because the amount of, oh man, just the amount of energy they bring. It's lively. I talked to a buddy who's now a rapper from Oakland. He's from Oakland. And I think he lives in Florida right now. Real cool guy. Definitely had issues when he was in the military. Discipline. And he had a troubled childhood in it fleshed out through his military career until he got out. Now yeah. he's doing really, really good for himself. He's worked for the FBI. He's good. worked for other three letters. Fuck yeah. And then he's just like, I don't want to do this. I want to do my rapping career, and I want to be a Taekwondo instructor. And he's doing great at fucking both of them. But his biggest thing, mind blank, Ooh. he's talking about something. Black churches. Oh, black churches. So I was talking about him, and he actually gave me a history on it that I didn't remember, or I didn't know ever. He said a lot of their liveliness came from slave days. Yes. And I was like, what? And he was like, look, don't be no racist cracker. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm actually intrigued. I don't know this history. I'm, I'm, we're sitting in his 90s catalog, fully tinted out, light baby blue. He turns down his... Bro never turned on his music. You would have to yell to talk to him and we're this close. And he turned on his music and he gave me a poem history. It's like a lot of the lively black churches came essentially from slave days. Yep. Because it's like, when were you able to share you? It was like Sunday, even for a majority, he said, for a majority of slave owners, it's like Sunday's your day. Like, yes, yeah. you had to work, but because Sunday's our day, I'm not spending time with you. Well, and not just that, but it's like they're they're getting into the spirit of the Lord. So I don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that slavery, anything about slavery was good or anything no, like that. No, I'm only but, I'm but, only tying this because I heard a story. Yeah, I don't know how true it is or have false. Have you have you ever read Roots? Roots. It sounds familiar. I think you've talked about it before. I've probably I've talked about a lot of books before. Roots is the story. It's based off of a like the the novel is obviously primarily fictional yeah but the story it is based off of is based off of a story that the writer had handed down through his family throughout the years okay and it starts all the way from his ancestor who was captured and sold into slavery in africa by his you know another tribe yeah because um, they probably lost him more. Yeah, but. because they he, they got captured. Yeah. And so he got sold into slavery. His name was Kunta Kinte. Um, and it's the story of him passing down teachings. And it goes from father to daughter to son to, you know, and it goes out to the family. And yeah. so it kind of gets to him. And in the back of it, he talks about how he, it, you know, at the end, he talks about how he traced the more or less the history of the spoken story of his family down throughout that thing. But the reason I bring up the um, uh, roots is because they do bring that up. They bring up the liveliness and the revelry of, and of the Sunday worship. You said something earlier, the Darwin Award, which got my mind thinking, and then you brought up this. History has always gone towards the victor. Yes. 
But not to say the other histories are trapped. Because we see this, the slave trade. We see stuff that comes through later, through stories, through shared testimonies in a way. And we see it through other aspects. And it's like, oh, well, we did all this and Japan bombed us first. And it was like, well, we took away their oil first. I mean, we, it was like, but a majority of America didn't know that. Yeah. And the majority probably still don't. But history has gotten to the point where it was like, well, now we actually are somewhat intrigued about the other side. Like, okay, this happened. Like, we talked about, oh, Nazi Germany. It's like, yeah, well, Russia, Japan, and China were, were worse on what they did. Well, especially a lot of what Japan was doing. Well, yeah. I mean... But, because they got away with they started it. finding testimonials and stories and diaries in these Indies countries, these floating islands. And they recently found a stockpile of bodies. This island's maybe, it's like a mile by a mile. But because there was some type of cave-in, so essentially what they did is, the island wasn't mile by mile when it was originally found. They dug up all this dirt, put it further out, grew the island a little bit, and just dumped bodies down there. There's thousands of bodies in this giant hole, and then they just covered it with maybe like two feet of dirt. Which, if you don't know, absolutely do some research because everyone knows about the horrors of the Holocaust and the terrible things that uh, Germany did during World War II. But really look up the terrible things that China did, or not China, that Japan did during World War II. Because they did some just atrocious shit. And they got away with it because they did a deal with yep. America. And to that's the point that they. None of them really served time. No. Their time no. was like maybe two, three years, five years. They, I think didn't, the, they didn't go up for war crime trials. Nope. Nothing. You got the bottle opener? I do want to switch over to uh, real estate, though. Real estate? Real estate okay. away. This is from, one way to do a segue. Um, one thing is, so we're selling our house. You yep. know that. Working with one of the real Really? Estate. You're selling your house? Tell me all about it. Hey, girl, hey, we're selling our house. <laughs> Hey, Cabo. But I didn't realize, like, I know I had a lot of shit in my house, but I didn't realize until we, like, fully fucking purchased I've sold my house before. But, yeah. Like, I guess I just, I'm using plastic boxes now versus cardboard boxes. So I have more boxes, but they're better put away. They're better compartmentalized. Yeah. They're labeled. So I don't have to dig through fucking boxes for days to find something. But I'm, I'm doing all this and... Realtor comes by, real sweet lady. We're like, oh, you want to sit at the table? Or you want to, and this is from the consumer point. Like, she is helping us. We're asking her. Right. And I was like, hey, we want to sell our houses where we want to go. And she's like, okay, we'll, we'll do this first. But she walks in, real sweet lady. And I was like, oh, we can sit at the table or we can sit around at the couch. We're at the small little coffee table. She's like, oh, here's fine. She sits on the floor. It's like, do you want a pillow? No, 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 I'm good. It's like I got a I got a butt pill that actually saves your coccyx and like yeah. it's really good for your tailbone instead of the hardwood floor. She's like, no, 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 it's fine. So we sit here for like thirty minutes, talk about the price we have, what we want to sell. It's like honestly, I just want to break even at the worst. Yeah, I, I want to get out of the house. I want a bigger house. So we're talking about this stuff. Took off today so they could take photos. Well, we're in the middle of doing laundry. Dude came. Dude looked fucking stone cold pissed off. Which I understand to a point. He wasn't pissed off. He was just serious. He was like, I yeah. want to get this done. I want to get this done. And my wife was like, you just seem so mad. And I was like, it's nine o'clock in the morning on a Friday. And he's maybe making $250 for these photos. He wants to get it good and done and then move on to the next one. Yeah. He's, he's probably got several he of these has lined several, up. Because I mean, talk about it. If you can make $250 for taking 27, 30 photos. Yeah. Yeah, and then, oh no, when I go home, pour myself a whiskey, have a beer, and Photoshop these or work these up, I'm good. Choose which one out of the collage of photos I just took. And then boom, send to the reader. But I didn't realize how empty the house looks when you're just purging it for moving. Like, you even walked over yeah. and it's like... Well, there's nothing, there's nothing left on any of the counters. 
like because you know there's always just dumb shit just you know uh, I, I I dumped a bottle cap here or something yeah. like that and there's nothing and it's just so we feel better like about home. that because our cats just fucking play with them and they're all over the place and the baby gets them he's like oh fuck I gotta get this but I really really like this realtor just for the fact that she's real I couldn't find the survey Wednesday or Thursday I was like I don't know where the survey is it's like $1600 it's like I know I had the survey I looked through all our important documents completely forgot to look IT wise on computer because I'd save all my shit on a drive somewhere yeah and she was like oh well have you thought about like if it's not with your documents when you signed for the house did they send an email did you give me a flash drive and then I had the flashback it was like it's in the computer. <laughs> so I go to my oh, computer no. <laughs> and I find it. I sent her. I was like, oh, we found it. It's still good. It's, I think, maybe a year and a half old, two years old. Mm-hmm. So I sent it to her. But through and through, she's just like, oh, yeah, this, this. Real fucking simple. But you don't realize how much shit you have until you really got to live with the minimum. And then. Like, shoot, I built four or five Lego sets from the 27 boxes I haven't built yet because we're going to move to a different house. It's like, all right, let's put them in a gallon Ziploc and then just break them down a little bit so they can fit in there and throw it in the box. But it was just like, I, I need a release from all this shit. Yeah. Because Monday, we finished painting. You came over and helped with the TV. It was a Tuesday. No, it was Monday. It was Monday. Or, no, it was Sunday. Was it Sunday? It was, yeah, no, it was. It was Monday, yeah. It was Monday. So, move the TV, put it in the room, finish painting the house, put it back up. Tuesday took off, just because my body was like, no, fuck you. And then I moved all the boxes. So now my garage looks probably nicer than it's ever looked. I offered to help you move boxes. It wasn't that much. It maybe took me 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, but you're broke. Yeah, but the original issue is because I moved them from the collage of the garage with everything just put in there as we packed it. And then it was all the black stackable boxes and then all the gray stackable boxes. So then when I moved them back in the garage, it was like, oh, well, the garage is clean now. Fully dusted it out, cleaned it out. It was like, I stacked it up. I was like, look, now I got an actual walkway to my freezer with all my cow meat. You mean there's not just like boxes <laughs> there's and not, you're tripping there's, over there's random there's shit? There's a Lego bag, but oh, it's all oh. stacked. And then I have the beer box, the carton box. Hold on. Brief, brief aside. All right. Uh, earlier, when I was like going back and forth to grab like camera equipment and all that jazz, uh, Pearl saw me like going out at one point, and she's like, "Fuck, where are you going? I see you loading shit up." And so she bolts it for the garage door, and I had like a pile. Was it when you're out here, she walked. No, this was over at oh, my okay. house, and um, I had a pile of boxes in my garage, and she fucking bolted, slid on the concrete, plowed through the boxes, and they went flying everywhere. It was such a sweet, just mm, satisfying all moment. All I'm seeing is Need for Speed Most Wanted. <laughs> Slow mo, stops all the cop cars, everything's <laughs> flying. But the other thing, so I read this on Reddit, and the realtor even asked me, "Oh, do you have like a Tesla charger? Do you have a power bank?" It's like, no, I'm one of those bastards that has enough money to buy a Tesla, but I ran a hundred foot cord all the way to the back of my house through that pipe because I have an all-in-one washer now. Yeah. So I use that plug for that. By the way, I'm just saying, the all-in-one washer is cool, but it makes no fucking sense to me. It makes zero fucking sense. It doesn't make sense. Because how does the the washing and the drying happen in the same place? So when your washer goes, this is basic dynamics. Okay. I think we're having an error. All right, we're retarded. Yeah. We're real bright. It's working now, though. Um, so, she plus with boxes. We're talking about, oh, the all-in-one washer. Yes. So, the way this works is when a normal washer works, it has all this excess heat. A normal washer, because if it washes with hot water, it has all this heat that's already built in there. Well, the machine has insulation, so the, it uses the heat 
water near the end to the point that it circles back and uses it when it's spinning for when it switches over to the heat cycle. It's, it's just another type of machine. It uses the heat from the washing cycle to go over to the dryer cycle. I don't think your explanation helped my retarded brain. Well, that's fine. You're from Texas. Hey, listen, I didn't have to get a get in order to finish. Neither did I. I got I, I got my early. I got my one point eight GPA. <laughs> I did still graduate early though. So I may be from Tennessee, but I'm smart. With two U's. <laughs> <laughs> but well, no, she she was asking me, it was like do you have a Tesla charger because you have a Tesla? I was like, no, I'm one of those dirty bastards. I was like, there's other ways to do this instead of spending two grand or doing it myself for about 600 bucks. Anytime I do work on electricity, I always get shocked. And my really? Wife, every time. And my wife always goes, you sound like R2-D2 when you get shocked. I've only been shocked once. So and I changed every plug in the house and a majority of the plugs I got shocked on. It sounds to me like you don't know how to work with electricity. I do. I just... Part of me enjoys the shock. All right. I mean, I can't. I don't want to know about your sex life now. <laughs> well, I mean, we do have a 12-volt battery in there for something. That's how we get it up. <sighs> Whoa. Goodness. So, my mom called me the other day. She wants to get... What'd she call you? She called me Stun, honey, uh, sugar, sweetie. <laughs> but she wants to get into crypto in a way. She calls me. and was like, I want to get in. I, I want to get into crypto. I was like, okay. Well, how do I do it? I was like, all the sarcastic comments I can say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, download this app. This is the one I use. It's backed by the SEC to a certain point. This much money is safe. It's like, but you gotta understand that you're buying a coin whose value can go up and down, just like the stock market in the world. Difference is crypto is decentralized. It's not really backed by too much. It's backed by operation, by what is going on, what people value it at. Yes. And which is technically like, everything is based off what you value it at. Yeah. But she was like well, what are you doing? So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing SHIB. I'm doing a couple others. And she was like, well, I'll just do whatever you're doing. I was like, just be prepared. Anything you throw at it, you might lose the money. Yeah. If you're not prepared to lose the money, don't get into it. She was like, well, I'm going to have to think about this. I was like, okay. That's I mean, smart. That That is smart. It was like, I have no problem doing it because it was my fun money. I was like, here you go. Throw it at it. When it goes big, cool. I have a bunch of money. Debt free. Do whatever the fuck I want. But she was like, well, I want to start canning. Because everyone's talking about, oh, it's the end of times. We're about to go into war again. And well, I mean, cyclically, it makes sense. No, it does. And I was like, well, I mean, I put your eggs in multiple baskets. See where it goes. Yeah. Like, if I put all my eggs in this one basket, it's like, I'm fully trusting in you to take care of my life. Doesn't always fucking work. It's like, we've seen that. No, I just had Reading Rainbow play in my head. <laughs> Reading Rainbow. <laughs> I saw a sign going up to Ed's ranch. Only you can stop wildfires. It was smoky. I was like, oh, I haven't seen one of those in fucking I, ages. I feel like I need one of those signs. Damn. But that, yeah, my mom wants to get into crypto. I was like, okay, well, this is what I'm doing. Do your own research. I think one of my favorite one of those calls I ever got is I got a call from my uncle one time. And he was like, hey, I want to go into the dark web. And I'm like, why? All right. You would have to do this, 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 and this. You know, VPN. Yeah, you have to prep. You know, Tor browser. You know, be able to understand what safe browsing practices are, which considering how many times I've cleaned his computer, I know he doesn't. Um, and at the end of it, he's like, that sounds like a lot of work. And I was like, yep, and I'm not doing it for you. My mom and there's asked nothing once. there. No, my mom asked once when I was up there, I was like, 
All right, let me pull up my dark web laptop. <laughs> She's like, what? I was like, yes, I have a laptop specifically. Because look, you can be 100% safe and still falter somewhere. Yeah. So it's like, no, there's literally a ghost on the back of this old, like... Pearl, stop your whining, girl. 98 XP Dell. Stop your whining. It's been upgraded since, but it was those old military 98 Dells that they had. With the extended battery pack and the little palm rest. So got onto it. And it's like, what, what do you want to see? Like, what is the purpose of this? Oh, I want to see the medical stuff. Like, what's out there? So I start showing a lot of the dark medical stuff that's out there. And she's like, yep, nope, I don't think I ever would. Because there's full on fucking videos. There's full on descriptions of everything that's going on. And this is just, this is an American where people yeah. are doing this shit. Yeah. She was like, yeah, no, I'm good. And once you see shit, you can't unsee you it. You can't unsee it. It's like, I think that was last year when I brought the computer up. And she's just like. Is my internet safe now? Am I gonna get in trouble? It's, it's like you're probably fine. It's the internet. I mean, for the most part, you're fine. I mean, eh. Were you saving child porn? No, then I you're, wasn't. Then you're probably fine. I did see in the news that was it Hunter Biden got indicted again. Mm-hmm. He's like, gonna get away with it. So we got Hunter, Trump, the other someone else. And there was the Florida governor. Apparently he signed a bill recently that was like, whatever he does, nobody can see what he spends his money on. No, bro, come on. No, dead serious. Well, and then we had that one governor who was like... Oh, New Mexico? Are yeah. Are talking about the New Mexico one yeah. where he's like, oh, fuck the Constitution. Yeah, no, she Nobody was just, can carry a gun. No one can carry a gun. This was two weeks ago or where she started talking about it. And yes. I think she passed the bill maybe a week ago now. Yeah. And guess what immediately happened? Everyone with guns showed up downtown. Good. Fucking all over the now, place. Now, I understand what she was going for in Albuquerque. Albuquerque is definitely a fucking horrible city to be in. You're talking about a 12 square miles of just fucking chaos all the time. Everybody's high, everybody's drunk, everybody's shooting at each other. And that, that's just the city now. And it's gotten worse and worse. So I understand where she was going for, but you... You can temporarily do it to a city, not a whole fucking state. I don't like there's I don't even agree with temporarily doing it to a city. How about this? How about you retrain your police? How about you actually improve your infrastructure? How about you actually try and help people? So the police and the infrastructure isn't the issue and they help the people the best they can. All the EMS services, all the medical services. The issue is the people. And that's where I was saying for a small time window, you can set a curfew. No. Nope. Whether nope. you agree with it or not, let me finish. Like whether you agree with it or not, you can set a curfew. The government did it, all of America, you have to stay in your house. Whether you agree with it or not, it happened. So there was precedent set. There was many other things she could have done other than nobody ever can carry guns unless you're an officer. It's like, no, if you're licensed, you can carry a gun. If you're an officer, you can. there's other ways she, I'm not saying what she did was right, I'm saying she could have done it a hell of a lot. All right, you better. bleeding heart liberal, go ahead and take my guns away now. Oh, I got more guns <laughs> inside than I know what to do with. I thought they all fell off the boat. Yeah, well, I still have the triggers. You got to go down there and keep the triggers. <laughs> like, that's the favorite part. It's where you finger all the time. <laughs> but no, when it came out, I was like, oh, fuck this. It's like, I'm totally going to talk about this on the podcast. And then you brought it up, and I was like, I did want to bring up that there was other ways she could have done it. Don't fucking drop down, nobody can carry a gun. Now what's everybody going to do? Well, I'm going to go buy a gun, I'm going to carry a gun. Yeah, just because. Just because. Out of principle. Out of, I don't know. Spite. <laughs> Spite. Another one is just like, fuck it, watch me. It's like, I know many bikers out there, they're like, they started carrying six or seven guns. They already carried one or two guns. They're like, watch this shit. I can, I can tell you right now that if that shit went down in San Antonio, you would see my ass down there, fucking loaded down with like 40 pounds of weaponry. San Antonio did the whole open carry thing where you can have an AR strapped to your back and all this. 
First day it dropped, me and like six, seven other guys, all wearing our cuts, riding through towns with an AR strapped to our back. It's like, ah, oh, fuck it. If we can do it. There's another dude who had a spear because you could walk around with spears now. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's like, I'd be afraid on the turn that I'd just pole vault myself somewhere else. But no, the way she went about it, the intention that she was going for was wrong. She could have put other things in place before going 100% we're doing this. It's like you could have you could have put a curfew on in certain areas if if there's issues with rape, molestation, drug abuse in certain sections, you can either bring more police there, you can cordon off areas, you can curfew areas instead of just the whole state. It's like hold on. Albuquerque's where? Northwest? Yeah. Mid northwest of New Mexico, it's a giant fucking square with a little lake down there. And I I get that New Mexico is kind of a poor state. It's it's only a poor state because of the amount of um, Native American reserve there, like the reservations they have there, because the average population there makes a majority of New Mexico, like per square mile. I think it's like a per capita or something. They're a generally a poor area. But most people in New Mexico and Albuquerque that have decent jobs, like your average job, you're talking high six figures, especially in Albuquerque. So, I mean, there's, if you're living pretty much north of whatever road it is, it's, um, I don't remember, but it's, it's pretty much on the hills of the mountain, is all the rich people. And then you have the ranches on the other side of the Air Force Base. And everything else is just poor. Like you're talking about mid rise buildings of just apartments, slums, double whites everywhere. It's like, but it's just been that way for a while. It yeah. used to be a really, really good city. And then it just got worse and worse. Drugs got in, gangs really took over, and gangs really run it. So I'm, that's why I say, because I've been there multiple times, and I understand her mindset of what she wanted to fix, but the way she went about it, 100% wrong in my opinion. The, I do believe there's many other ways she could have gone about it. I really do. It's like, look at your license, this, and just don't open carry. Yeah. Like, don't let me know you're carrying a gun. If you're carrying a gun, fuck it. Just don't let me know. And if you are carrying a gun, have the proper paperwork. Like, don't make our job hotter, and don't be a fucking dick. Hotter? Hotter. Hard. 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 Are you from Boston? No. I did live out there for a little bit. Ooh. That reminds me of something else. I saw an article, and I didn't deep dive into it or anything, right? But this was just like a weird article I saw where they were talking about how um, the southern accent is slowly but surely going away. Yep. No, I did research into this, and this has been coming for about 10, 12 years. Yeah. At least. I'm sure there's before, but this has been ongoing because, for example, my wife's a city girl. I am country through and through. I was like, ah, fuck it, we'll do it this way. There's other ways you can do it. Nah, this works. This will work. And then it takes five hours. To <laughs> but it worked. It worked. Hey, it was done. But more and more people are wanting to have a country boy have a country girl because of I don't know media because of publicity because whatever it's gotten to the point that more people want a more down to earth person other than an uptight person that, and this is through reddit comments and people's views on it and the biggest thing was I can actually start a family I want to start a family at my age and I want to do it with someone that has similar values of what I currently have. Right. Not saying far left, far, no, just my values are similar to what their values are. Yeah. So, and then sometimes they move to the city and then over time you start losing your accent. You start, what was it, assimil assimilizing, assimil ass assimilating? Yep, that's the word. That's a big word. Assimilating. Are so you, you sure? Yeah. I mean, it's just got a couple syllables, bro. It's more than dog. <laughs> or moonshine. But they start... Run, spot, run. <laughs> run, spot, run. Redfish, bluefish. 
But my fish, your fish, two fish, you fish, mm. whatever that was. Doctor Seuss, Doctor Suez. But a lot of it, I think, is disappearing because they start getting around people and either they're made fun of so they're trying to fix it or they're just around people for so long that they start talking like it. It's like, shoot, when I'm around you more, more of my country comes out. Mm-hmm. And when, I'm, when my parents come down, shoot, I start talking slower and words start coming out like this. But then when I'm at work, I'm talking really fast. And it it's just an easier way for me to get it across. Mm-hmm. So it could be that or it could just be they're more relaxed than they were. Like when they started, they were relaxed and comfortable being who they were. Maybe they got uncomfortable along the way and then changed. I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't have a full understanding of why. I just, I dove deep enough into seeing what everyone else thinks and what studies have stated. It's a comfortability thing or it's a simulation thing. Let me grab a drink real quick. Oh, grab me one, definitely. What you want? A beer. Nope. Ooh. Doggy go doggy. So. We're working on a couple things. We're definitely trying to get the layout better. Trying to get better with our cues. So hit a comment below. Subscribe. Like. Let us know what we can work on. We're, we're new to this. Trying to understand it. A lot of this is a release for us. So like I said. Just throw a comment below. Definitely like. Subscribe. Give a shit. Tell us what we're doing wrong. What you'd like to see better. Obviously, we have technical issues here and there. No, I'm pretty sure we're perfect and we couldn't possibly do anything better. He's you know, from Texas. You can't take anything from a Texan and hold it true. They know, still want to fly their flag with America. You know, the only thing that this needs more of is Pearl. More Pearl. Oh, Pearl. Pearl Scout. Pearl. So camping season's coming to my Oh, says. camping season's are coming. Like, Ooh, I'm excited. I was so fucking happy going to work the other day just because instead of taking so much battery usage here, my car was cool Cabo. and I got into it both times. Cabo, you're definitely in front of the camera, bro. Cabo. 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 Hey. Okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's getting cooler. I like that my car's cooled off faster. My house is cooler. It was 69 degrees all day in my house. I was like, fuck yes. It's it's igloo weather time. You you good, Pearl? First time walking, huh? That bag looks hurt, is hurting. Yeah, I think it's getting worse. It looks like it's getting worse. It's not, it's not getting worse. It's worse when she's been active on it and I haven't given her any kind of Inflation ibuprofen or, or anything. Yeah, it, it's, it's inflammation. Inflammation? Inflammation's the word. Okay. Well, I, you give me shit. Straight, straight up doubted myself. I say the word right, and I'm like, I don't know if I don't said that word right. As long as we hang the flag right, you're good. You mm-hmm. can sit there. I, uh, you mentioned that. I was hanging a Texas flag at my house. I put it up. Upside down. <laughs> I'm in distress. <laughs> so, talking about flags. So, my little sister, bleeding hard left and right. Rowan Wade just got overturned. Yeah. And she just didn't want to talk to any of the family. She talked to many other members of the family. She talked to my dad. And I was like, oh, I just got removed from all social media. My number's blocked. You text me, say my number's blocked. So, I called a different way. I think it was like Google number or something. So, I called her. I was like, did I do something wrong? She was like, well, I'm sure you agree with the de- decision of Roe versus Wade. I was like, I think there's a lot of government overreach. I, yeah. That, that's my standpoint. Whether I agree in the decision or not is irrelevant because I don't agree in government overreach. She's like, well, that doesn't answer the question. I was like, no, that actually answers the question and then some. I think society needs to be making this decision, not the government. Correct. I was like, my belief is there's so much government overreach that we lose a lot of ourselves across the world. Mm-hmm. I was like, do research into it. And then she re-added me on a bunch of stuff. And this is more just her reaction to removing the family. 
and then she posted, I don't even know, she posted some photo that was supposed to emulate distress. Emulate distress? How? I don't know. I was like, if you're, do you, are you an American? Are you a patriotic American by the way? She's like, yeah. <laughs> then post the flag upside down for your Facebook profile picture. Like, yeah. seriously, if you're distressed, this. Yeah. She was like, really? And I was like, so I sent in her links and I was like, yeah, here you go. This is actually what it means. It was like, if you claim to be an American and you're proud to be an American and you're patriotic by your own terms, by your own terminology, then put the flag upside down. Mm -hmm. Like, you're distressed that instead of whatever this is that came out two years ago that's supposed to mean it. Not to say it doesn't mean it, but nobody knows. Pearl, no ma'am. Nobody, mass majority, Come knows here. what this random image is. I still don't know what it is. Still don't know where she got this belief that that is. But her big thing was just, well, you believe this because dad told me you believe this. I was like, okay, just because I believe these things doesn't mean I don't have opinions on other things. And doesn't mean that I wouldn't be willing to listen to your opinion. Yep. And this, so this is a frustrating point, right? Like, I want dissenting opinions. I do not want to live in an echo chamber. Don't fucking yes, man. It was like, hey, Mike, let's do this. Oh, yes. Hey, let's do this. Yes. Let's do this. Yes. Let's do this. Yeah. Bro, be your fucking self for once. I have family members who have put themselves in an echo chamber, and you can hear it when you have conversations with them. I don't want to live inside an echo chamber. I want to have, and I do have friends who I have very strong dissenting opinions with. And I've had full conversations about Roe versus Wade, about trans rights, about, you know, gay marriage, and the whole shebang. And we've had, we've sat down together, eaten dinner together, and had comfortable conversations. Healthy guess dialogue. What? Thank you. And we've still, they're still my friend. There's still people I, I would invite over. You know, there's still... That was, that was my coworker. Me and him are s far opposite sides of the spectrum for what we do. We both Z? do. Z? Huh? Z? Zach? No. No. Me and Zach actually grew in a lot of stuff. And he actually has a lot of similar beliefs as me and you. It's just, he doesn't know how to express himself. Honestly express himself. That's yeah. his biggest issue, which is why he runs into a lot of issues. But no, my coworker that works on my system with me. He's my junior and we've had, I put him up for many awards because he's doing his fucking job and then some. Yeah. I don't like him. He knows I don't like him and he doesn't like me. I don't care. Do your fucking job and we're both cordial now. Like there was a couple points where he'd jump up and chew someone's ear off. Got talked to, fixed that and we moved past it. But I've put him up for many awards and he's got a monetary value asset for doing above because just because i might not like you personally does not mean <laughs> that i cannot get along with you professionally so, this last time i think you got like a 200 hundred dollar gift card from the company and he asked me the next day he's like did you put me up for the award i was like yeah yeah he's like i thought you didn't like me i was like i, I don't. don't no one says i have to like you i don't to have to like you in order to say that job. you're doing good work like that that mindset I do believe has ruined a lot of America. It was like, I don't care if I like you or not. If you're tasked to do A and you do A through F, separate your personal from your professional because these are two very different things. And if you can separate your personal and professional, you will find that you excel. Yep. I have this in the saying that I have I have at work. I don't remember what football player said it. Um, I think it was, I think it was one of the Browns. And he's a black gentleman. He's like, "Look, I'm here to dance, monkey dance." And he explained it in an interview. I'll have to find the video and send it to you. But his big thing was, my job is to entertain people and do football. That is my job. My job is dance, monkey dance. It's not racist. It's not biases. No. Your job is this. Dance monkey dance. Do your fucking job. Yeah. Like, if you're an entertainer, entertain. I don't care that you have this belief. This, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Like, the as past as, couple years. As long as you ain't diddling kids. Agreed. It's like, look, I cannot like you 
as an actor, you can be believing in whatever. Me and Jess have had the conversation in front of you guys and friends. It's like, yeah. oh, this actor. Oh, well, they did this. Or Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda's another one. It's like, I may not fucking like her at all, but I can't negate that she has been successful, that she is a good actor across the board for the movie she plays in. Do I like those movies? No. But we, we talk about actors, and it's like, well, I don't like that actor because he does this. Like, Dwayne just, The Rock, just got in trouble for his whole, oh, we're really rich with Oprah, but donate to this cause. Yeah. Okay. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and call it. Uh, this has been Name Pending. I'm Mike Culberson. And Keeper. Hey, girl, I, want hey. you, I want you to fuck that like button, and please subscribe. <laughs>